Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha. This video is not going to be a typical first impressions video as I personally was not entertained enough by this game to even be able to make myself look interesting, let alone the video game. And even though I did not like this game at all, I thought it was still worth using as a case study for a good deal of games that I've been running into recently. And the reason for all of this is that recently I've been feeling rather bored with a good deal of the indie titles that I've been playing. I have received review code for nearly 20 games within the past week alone, either through PR distribution or directly from indie developers themselves, and while I admit I've touched very few of the games whose keys were emailed to me directly, I did play the majority of the other games, not to mention I'd purchased quite a few as well. But after half an hour, sometimes even less, I found myself getting bored and completely lost interest. Now, some of you look at my channel and... Even in spite of my still very small numbers by YouTube standards, and see me producing a new video every day whenever possible, with some games that are quite good for their genre and their price point, while some of the games are not so good. But what you don't see, especially in recent days, are the other three or four or sometimes as many as six games that I had looked at that evening. A fair amount of time goes into each video, even outside of the game being showcased. Uh, those games don't get shown at either just good enough to be terribly bland or not bad enough to elicit a full-scale rant. They are the painfully mediocre in my eyes. Uh, such is the case with Helium, the game you're seeing here. I used footage of the game in a previous video, but I hadn't actually planned on doing a first impressions or even a full review of the game. Reason being is because it fell into the category of being so dull that I had no interest in even finding the words to either promote it or deride it. And this is an issue that I've been finding with a great deal of games in recent days. Helium, for example, looks like a decently well-made game. Its graphics for a $5 title are exceptional. They show a certain level of polish that one might find in a much higher priced game. That, of course, probably should have been a warning for me. The game has some interesting issues on top of it. Not with the controls or stability, those actually seem to be fine, but it's with the smaller details of the game, the quote-unquote finer points, such as having the keystones you're supposed to find to open doors appear to be the same material that makes up the vast majority of the map you're playing in, the odd morph-in of the foliage within the game as you traverse the playing area. And that is just with the terrain. The problems I have found with this game are many. The AI for the enemy aliens is woefully inadequate, as is their movement capabilities. Sometimes they continue attempting to path through a rock or some other static object until you happen to shoot them, in which case they begin circling you at half the speed of light while you attempt to bring your melee attack to bear on them because when they do that, there is absolutely no point in attempting to shoot them directly and to waste your ammunition. There is also the fact that the different item types you pick up are not clearly explained at all within the game. Indeed, nothing really is, which denotes a certain lack of caring within your game which does not bode well for the player. Now, there appear to be, from what I've seen, three different types of pickups. One is health, another is ammunition, and the third turns your weapon into a shotgun for a time, although I've not seen any form of indication as to how many shots you'll be able to get off before it reverts, which would be nice given you actually do have to aim with the two differently in order to make full use of the two different ammunition types. In addition to that, you have to make sure to not reload in between these sparse bouts of combat that you'll face within the game. Again, it's not explained to you, but to do so removes any remaining rounds of your oh-so-preciously rare ammunition from that particular magazine, and given the scarcity of ammo drops that I'd found, I wish I'd known that at the start of the game, as through the first hour I was casually tossing aside most of my ammo without even realizing it, and that is of course because your health and ammo counters are small circles at opposite corners of the screen. Now, I actually thought that was a good design choice aesthetically. It felt clean and uncluttered and very in keeping with the minimalistic lines of the game's weapon itself, an almost elegant simplicity that I actually could admire. Unfortunately, the thicker or thinner circles did not do much to relate actual ammo counts for me and only served to let me know that I was nearly or completely out of ammo due to my casually tossing aside nearly full magazines with each reload. And the story itself being delivered in short snippets of text. Now, as you can scan certain corpses within the game, you're rewarded with short personal log snippets that help push the nearly vacuously empty narrative forward. 
this sort of thing is done so very often within smaller games that to me by this point it almost feels like a cheap cop-out. An easy way to find something to attempt to hold the player's interest. And this is actually the largest complaint I have with a great deal of these games. Not the core mechanics of the games or their graphics. I've actually said a great many times that good graphics do not a great game make. I would rather play a hundred Undertales than even one Star Wars Battlefront EA because while Star Wars Battlefront EA, and yes, that's what I'm calling it because the original Battlefront was vastly superior, was painfully bland. A graphical and musical spectacle to be certain, but with gameplay mechanics that promoted isolation, which within a multiplayer-only experience is, to my mind, a cardinal sin. But games like Undertale have heart. They show effort and character. They show innovation even with the most simplistic of controls or core game mechanics. They take a variety of those simplistic ideas and combine them in new and creative ways that engage the player and keep them engaged. Whereas games like Helium are very much the polar opposite. Games like Helium who advertise themselves as a, and I quote, hardcore sci-fi first-person shooter. Now, analyze the game that you've seen so far. Does that really look like a hardcore game mechanic to you? No, I'd, I would certainly think not. Games like Helium lack meaningful content to the point of being more empty than the vacuum of space, and yes, before someone comments that space is anything but empty, it's a churn of phrase, so please just roll with it. Games like Helium are difficult not because of good design or good gameplay mechanics, but because of glitches and bugs that introduce a level of difficulty that isn't in actuality within the game. The point that I'm trying to make with Helium and so many other games that have been released in the past two weeks, and it has been a painful past couple of weeks for new indie titles, let me tell you, is that they seem to have their core framework down. They're good there. But when it comes down to actual content within the games, they're left sorely lacking. Games are supposed to simply be fun. If a person has to work in order to find something, anything enjoyable within your game, then you're doing something wrong or you're not doing enough of something. You have to do something to stand out. You don't need complex game mechanics or crazy graphics or even insane play length, but if you're going to leave something out of your game, leave it out completely. People will understand that and most people will not even care. But if it's something you're including in your game, well then, you are selling this product professionally to consumers for money you had best make sure that what you're including works as intended and that there are at least enough of it to be entertaining. And do some testing with some groups. Developers, best bet, find a Steam group that shares interest in the type of game that you're doing and reach out to their founder or moderator. Offer them a certain number of Steam keys in exchange for some playtesting of your game for you, for those that would be willing. Get some honest feedback from average gamers before you decide to start selling it. And then for God's sake, listen to their feedback. The vast majority of them will be only too happy to help. Be honest and direct, treat your customers with respect, and they will do the same. In the sea of asset flips and asshole developers that they all have to wade through on a daily basis, an honest and fair developer seems a breath of fresh air being led into a very musty room. Plus, if you created a game that your batch of testers happen to enjoy... Ask them to provide their honest comments on the game in the user reviews portion. You gain some visibility, some QA testing, and some feedback, and after some refinement and tweaking, you'll end up with an even better game that those people, not to mention your customers, will be able to enjoy and will be willing to recommend to others. But games like Helium take a different tactic. They apparently were not aware of how dull their game was or simply didn't care, which Ultimately is a shame because, once again, this was a game that showed a certain amount of promise, only to fall completely flat. And I do apologize for once again standing on my soapbox and speaking directly to developers out there when I should be speaking to you, my viewers. You are the ones that should matter to me much more than these developers. Which is why I still read each and every single comment on every one of my videos. I, of course, don't respond to nearly as many as I would like, but I do still read them. Because to me, that's how a YouTuber will improve for their audience. By listening to their feedback and taking criticism as valuable information to help better my content. But at the same time, I do want these games to be better. I want to be able to recommend good games, not just point out flotsam. I want to not have to fight to find something worthwhile to present to anyone because 
I have no desire to be known strictly as a hit piece channel or a channel that rides on the coattails of others. I think it's been proven that I do have fairly strongly held beliefs and opinions involving video games and I have absolutely no qualms in sharing them. If only some of these developers would be as willing. To my mind, it's not rocket science on how to get meaningful feedback, but it seems many of them simply do not think about that aspect and that resource for being able to improve their games. And it's because of that reason that we end up with games like Helium, so average as to be nearly painful. And no, I'm not going to assign this game a numerical score. I think my opinion here is plenty, and I would like to think I got my point across. But feel free to tell me what you think, and don't forget to like and share. If you're new, please do make use of that subscribe button. Links to my Patreon and everything else are in the description down below. Once again, I am Sid Alpha, and thank you for watching.